kind of crazy to think that there was a time in history when building a guitar could literally get you in trouble with the law. It's even crazier to think that in that exact moment of history, a guy was able to build what is now one of the most beautiful and innovative acoustic guitars on the market. Just like I don't care about the political regime of my country at the moment, I want to build guitars, so let me build guitars. Now, obviously referring to Furch guitars, I have here with me a beautiful yellow master's choice. It's a beautiful guitar we're going to review today. We're gonna to talk about the specs, we're gonna play stuff. Uh, we're gonna talk about how it's built and the innovation that this guitar has brought. But also guys, we're gonna talk about the history of this guitar, which it's kind of pretty interesting and it made me realize how lucky we are nowadays to be able to build what we want, play what we want and sell what we want. In fact, Frank Furch had to literally hide in his garage to be able to build these guitars. So thank you so much to Furch for uh, reaching out and I'm super happy and lucky to be able to review this guitar. I'm gonna share this review with you. Now let's get started. <laughs> Now, the very first Furch guitar was built in Czechoslovakia back in the 70s. Now, it is worth to mention that back then, the communist regime didn't really allow any entrepreneurial activity, so building a guitar wasn't allowed. But that didn't really stop Mr. Furch, because first, it was way too expensive to buy a guitar. Second, it was even more expensive to import one. And third, he was way too passionate about making instruments and so he's just set up a hidden studio in his garage and he built a very first Furch guitar. And we know how this thing goes. You build the first one, your friends like it and so they ask you to do another one and then another one. And so back then he was able to build about a hundred guitars between the 70s and the 80s, which gave him the title of top guitar maker on the Czech scene. Now, even though Frank Furch was a great guitar maker, he was only able to expand in 1989 when the Velvet Revolution brought the collapse of communism in Czechoslovakia. And that kind of made me think how lucky we are to be able to live in a moment well, we can do what we want. You know, we can express our opinion, we can build what we want, we can sell what we want. So really hat off to Frank Furch for keeping the production in a really difficult moment in history. <laughs> the guitar and all the innovation that Peter Furch, Frank Furch's son, was able to bring into the production. Obviously I really like the guitar from a visual standpoint, it looks beautiful. We have cedar on top and Indian rosewood on side and back. Uh, the fretboard is ebony as well as the unique headstock and we got mahogany for the neck. Now one thing that I like is the body shape which is grand auditorium body shape. Look how thick this, uh, this guitar is. Now this is great for finger style as well as body percussion, but it sounds great also with strumming. You have a lot of bass, but the guitar is really, really balanced. Let's talk about a few unique features that this guitar has. The first one, which I really, really love, is the composite neck design. So basically the truss rod in this guitar is fixed in a rigid carbon 
casing, meaning once you set up the truss root, it's not going to move. It's really, really hard, but it supports the bend of the neck smoothly. Now the guitar comes with elixir strings, but the ones she had on were way too thick for my playing. I think they were probably 11 or 12, so I changed to 10. Super light strings, but the guitar still resonates beautifully, and the most important thing, I didn't have to touch the neck. Now the second unique thing that I like about this guitar is that the top board is voiced. And what that means is each top board has different thickness on each guitar. Now usually the top board has the same thickness for each guitar, for example 2.5 millimeters, but for the first guitar it doesn't really work like that. They shape the top board based on a number of specs, such as acoustic thickness and loudness. So they measure all these things and then they literally cut parts from the inside of the board in different positions to achieve the best tone, sound and volume. So we can literally say that each guitar is unique. Now this is the yellow master choice, so it's only done on the top board, but for the orange, the red and the rainbow, which is custom, you actually not only get it on the top board, but you also get it on the back board. Now obviously such a beautiful and unique guitar can have a bad lacquer. So Furch came up with their own lacquer recipe, which took two years to develop. Now it's nine different layers done with a UV machine. Now this lacquer is actually thinner, which allows the guitar to resonate beautifully. Now price-wise, the Yellow Master Choice is priced around 2,400 euros, so it's definitely not a cheap guitar, but it's obviously unique in sound, unique in features, and it's overall just a beautiful instrument. This one comes with the pickup and the condenser mic, so you can actually blend the two different mics, and with a tuner and an EQ notch. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the story behind the first guitar. Make sure that you check them out if you want. I'm gonna leave the uh, website in the description down below. Check them out. Let me know if you like it. Let me know what you think about the Yellow Master's Choice. And let me know if you own a first guitar. I'm really curious to know what you think about these beautiful guitars. So, see you next time. Thank you for watching. Keep playing and keep 